Few realize that over 70% of the world's infrastructure is built from a single material. Concrete, a mixture born from sand, water, stone, and a touch of cement, has quietly become the foundation that holds up modern civilization. Behind its rough exterior lies a remarkable transformation. From mountain rock to fine cement powder, fired, ground, and refined at temperatures reaching thousands of degrees Celsius. When that cement finally meets sand, gravel, and water inside massive steel mixers, it turns into concrete, the silent force supporting the weight of our world. Join us as we uncover how humans transform sand, stone, and cement into the colossal concrete structures that shape the modern age. Over 2,000 years ago, the Romans discovered the power of a simple blend, volcanic ash, lime, and water, the foundation of ancient concrete. With it, they built the Pantheon and the Colosseum, where stone was bound together not by steel or machinery, but by a natural reaction. From that invention, humankind learned to turn earth and rock into eternal architecture, marking the dawn of modern construction. Yet today, the very material that once upheld great empires has become a burden of the industrial age. The cement industry emits over 4 billion tons of CO2 every year, accounting for about 7.5% of global emissions, a colossal price humanity pays for the foundations of its own civilization. Now, as the world moves into a greener era, concrete must evolve, cutting emissions, reusing materials, and reinventing the very process that once powered human progress. The journey of making concrete begins with layers of limestone and clay, the two essential raw materials used to produce cement, the key ingredient that binds concrete together. Quarries located near the plant are carefully managed to optimize transport costs and minimize emissions. Limestone, which makes up nearly 80% of the mix, serves as the primary source of calcium oxide, CaO, the crucial element for the formation of clinker. The extraction process starts with controlled blasting, where a grid of 8 to 12 meter deep holes is filled with emulsion or ANNFO explosives. Once charging is finished, workers sound the warning horn and carry out the detonation under strict safety procedures. At blast, the rock mass breaks along the planned lines, producing thousands of tons of fragmented rock. Powerful crawler excavators move in swiftly to load the debris onto dump trucks or conveyor belts bound for the primary crusher. There, the massive stones are reduced to pieces smaller than 100 millimeters, ready for blending and fine grinding in the next stages. Meanwhile, clay is extracted from open pit mines using excavators. Though it requires no blasting, its moisture content and consistency are closely monitored to ensure every batch of raw mix remains stable preparing the way for the intense kiln firing that will turn these humble materials into cement, the very foundation of concrete. After the initial crushing, limestone and clay travel through an industrial conveyor system, the lifeline connecting the quarry to the plant, running tirelessly day and night. Each belt, stretching hundreds of meters, is made of steel-reinforced rubber built to withstand abrasion while carrying thousands of tons of material per hour. Self-aligning rollers and cleaning scrapers keep the flow steady, while load sensors and frequency drives control speed with remarkable precision. Some modern plants even employ enclosed pipe conveyors, reducing dust and saving energy, transforming what was once a simple transport step into a finely tuned link of modern industry. Once delivered to the plant, the limestone and clay are unloaded into storage yards, where stackers and reclaimers carry out the crucial process of homogenization. The goal is to stabilize the chemical composition, since even a minor deviation in CaO or SiO2 content can affect the quality of the resulting clinker. The raw materials are deposited in thin, alternating layers to form large stockpiles that naturally blend as they are reclaimed. In advanced facilities, real-time X-ray analyzers continuously monitor oxide ratios and automatically adjust the stacking rate 
to maintain balance. This precise control ensures a highly uniform raw mix, providing a stable foundation for all subsequent stages of cement production. After homogenization, the raw materials are precisely proportioned according to the blending formula and fed into the grinding system, a key stage that determines the quality of the cement. Here, the mixture enters high-capacity mills, typically two-chamber ball mills or vertical roller mills, depending on each plant's technology and scale. These massive machines operate continuously, 24 hours a day, with outputs ranging from 100 to 500 tons per hour, ensuring a steady supply for the entire production line. Inside, the materials are constantly crushed and compressed until they reach an average fineness below 90 microns, forming a uniform powder known as raw meal. In some older facilities, the wet grinding method is still used, where water is added to form a slurry. While this approach allows easier control of chemical ratios, it consumes significantly more energy and has largely been replaced by modern dry grinding technology. The entire system, from dosing and blending to grinding, is monitored automatically through SCADA software, which tracks flow rate, mill speed, fineness, and gas temperature in real time. As a result, the output raw meal remains consistently stable and meets the high technical standards required for clinker production. After the grinding process, the raw materials are fed into the preheater tower, a multi-level structure rising several tens of meters high. Inside, the material gradually descends through a series of cyclones, while hot gases from the rotary kiln flow upward in the opposite direction. This counter-current heat exchange raises the temperature of the mix to around 850 degrees Celsius, initiating the preliminary decomposition of limestone. The process significantly reduces both the time and the amount of fuel required for the subsequent clinker burning stage. In the past, the primary source of heat came from coal. In recent years, however, many cement plants have begun adopting alternative fuels, particularly those recycled from waste and scrap rubber. Old tires, industrial gloves, and non-recyclable plastics are collected, sorted, and sent through specialized processing lines where they are cut, shredded, and separated from metal using magnetic systems. The cleaned rubber fraction is then dried, ground into fine particles or compressed into pellets, and fed into an automated fuel supply system directly connected to the kiln's combustion chamber. Inside an environment approaching 1,000 degrees Celsius, the rubber and plastic particles burn completely, generating energy equivalent to coal while producing up to 30% less CO2 emissions. The remaining inorganic ash can even be reused as a mineral additive in clinker production, effectively closing the material loop and turning industrial waste into a source of renewable energy for the cement industry. The shift not only helps the cement industry lessen its environmental footprint, but also opens a new path for the material sector one where efficiency, recycling, and sustainability coexist within a single unified system of production. After leaving the pre-cal center, the raw meal enters the rotary kiln, the very heart of the cement production line. It is a massive steel cylinder, stretching dozens of meters in length, set at a slight incline of about three to five degrees and rotating slowly at around three to four revolutions per minute. Inside, temperatures can exceed 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit, about 1,450 degrees Celsius, hot enough to partially melt the mix and trigger a series of complex mineral reactions. As the kiln rotates, the material gradually moves from the cooler end toward the hotter zone, passing through the stages of drying, heating, and clinkering. At these extreme temperatures, oxide compounds such as CaO, CiO2, Al2O3 and Fe2O3 combine to form key minerals like Elite, C3S, and Belite, C2S, crystalline structures that determine the strength and binding capability of cement. The result is dark gray nodules known as clinker, resembling small pebbles, solid and glowing red hot as they drop onto the cooling conveyor. The entire kiln operation is continuously monitored through temperature sensors, infrared cameras, and gas pressure gauges. All data is transmitted to the SCADA control center 
where engineers adjust rotation speed, fuel feed, and material residence time to fine-tune the reactions. Yet, it is also in this stage that the largest amount of CO2 in the entire process is released, not only from fuel combustion, but also from the chemical decomposition of KCO3 within the raw meal, leaving the deepest carbon footprint in the global concrete production chain. When the clinker exits the rotary kiln, it is still glowing red hot, with a temperature above 1000 degrees Celsius. To prevent further phase transformation and ensure mineral stability, the clinker is immediately transferred to the great cooler, a moving bed system where cold air is blown upward from below. The entire process runs continuously under precise control, rapidly reducing the clinker's temperature to a safe level below 100 degrees Celsius. Once cooled, the clinker is fed into the grinding mill, together with gypsum and mineral additives such as granulated blast furnace slag or fly ash. The grinding process is carried out using large capacity ball mills or vertical roller mills. Each clinker nodule is continuously crushed and ground between steel balls or rollers, producing fine cement powder with a typical fineness of around 4,500 square centimeters per gram depending on the product type. The quality of the cement powder is strictly monitored through automated weighing and analytical systems, ensuring that every batch leaving the plant meets precise standards for fineness, strength, and mineral composition. After being finely ground, the finished cement undergoes a strict quality control process to ensure every batch meets technical standards. Samples are automatically collected along the transport pipeline and sent to the central laboratory where engineers perform a series of tests on fineness, setting time, compressive strength, volume stability, and chemical composition. The certified cement is then pneumatically conveyed to storage silos, towering steel tanks that rise several stories high and can hold thousands of tons. From these silos, the product follows two main routes, bagged in bulk. In the bagging line, Automated filling systems precisely load 50 kilograms of cement into each multi-layer, paper, or polypropylene bag. Electronic weighing sensors keep the error margin within plus or minus 0.2 kilograms per bag. Once filled, the bags are sealed, weight checked, and carried along roller conveyors to the palletizing area, where industrial robots stack them in 10 by 10 formations, wrap them in protective film, and hand them off to automated forklifts for storage or export container loading. For bulk cement, the product travels through sealed pipelines into specialized tanker trucks, each with a capacity of 20 to 40 tons, pressurized for quick unloading at ready-mix concrete plants. The entire packaging, storage, and dispatch process is managed through integrated SCADA and ERP systems, allowing real-time monitoring of output, batch traceability, and strict compliance with technical standards for every ton leaving the facility. At this point, the journey of cement ends, but the journey of concrete begins. As this fine gray powder meets water, sand, and stone to form one of the most resilient materials ever created in the world of construction. From the storage silos, Cement is transported in sealed tanker trucks to ready-mix concrete plants, where it is combined with sand, gravel, and water to produce fresh concrete. The entire process is governed by an automated batching system, which precisely measures each ingredient according to the design mix. The margin of error for any component must not exceed plus or minus 1%, as even a small change in the water-to-cement ratio can affect the strength and durability of the final product. Inside force mixers or horizontal drum mixers, powerful steel blades rotate to create a turbulent motion that allows the cement paste to coat every particle of aggregate evenly. The mixing time typically ranges from 30 to 90 seconds, depending on the mixer's capacity and the grade of concrete being produced. At large construction sites, the mixed concrete can be pumped directly through high-pressure pipelines to the pouring location while smaller projects often rely on chutes or bucket lifts. Regardless of scale, this gray fluid mixture remains the product of precision, technology, and control, transforming what seems like a simple liquid into the solid foundation of the modern world. 
But concrete doesn't end its journey in foundations or skyscrapers. Part of it takes shape inside factories, becoming concrete blocks, preformed units with high compressive strength and standardized geometry. The mix is molded under pressures of several tons, combined with high-frequency vibration to eliminate air pockets and compact the material. After molding, the blocks are cured in sealed chambers where temperature and humidity are carefully controlled to ensure complete hydration. Once cured, they emerge as solid, uniform concrete blocks, precise down to every edge and surface, forming the backbone of walls, partitions, and urban infrastructure across the world. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the story of a material that has built and continues to uphold the modern world. Concrete is far more than a mixture of cement, sand, and stone. It is a testament to human ingenuity, the ability to transform the seemingly lifeless into the lasting foundations of civilization. If this video helped you appreciate the silent strength of the world's most familiar material, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Because behind every block of concrete lies an extraordinary journey where knowledge, technology, and human effort come together to shape the world we live in.